Okay, so here we go. Consider the graph on the right. Now, everything we do here is we're going to work backwards. So yesterday, we worked with the equation of y equals mx plus b, and then we graphed it. So uh, if you looked at today's homework, it was looking at the graph and then writing the equation. So everything we're doing is we're relating it to y equals mx plus b. Okay? Can all of you get your formula sheets out? Because that equation has a special name. And we're going to write the name of it above your formula sheet. If you need another formula sheet, there's some in the back bucket, the blue paper. And there's three names. And I, I, can you please write these names down? So the first name is the slope y-intercept. Slope y-intercept form. Or slope intercept. Sometimes they don't say y-intercept, sometimes they do. The slope intercept form. Okay? So on, a, on an exam, you're going to actually get a blank copy, and you'll have to know these names of each equation. But for now, it's really handy if you have the names on your own formula sheet as you practice. So the name of y equals mx plus b is slope-intercept form, or slope-y-intercept form. Why might it be called slope-intercept form? Why might it be? Why would it be called slope-y-intercept form? Jaden? Yeah. It has a slope and the y-intercept right in it. M is your slope and B is your y-intercept. It's a very logical name. The second one is called general form. General form. Um, it's a very formal way to write the, an equation. really doesn't tell us too much about the equation, though. That's called general form. It's very general. It's not specific. And the last one is called slope point form or point slope form. And the reason why it's called point slope form or slope point form is because we're going to use a point other than our y-intercept and our slope. Oh, always, but a blank copy. So I'll give you, yeah, and on your final, you get to use your formula sheets. So the formula sheet is, will always be given to you on a test. If you don't need it for a test, I haven't been giving it out. Like radicals, there's nothing on there to help you with. Right, yeah? For the final exam, you will not be able to have a cheat sheet. Sorry. Okay. All right. So grabbing, going back to the notes, remember that when we look at our equation, mx plus b, what does m stand for? Slope, and b is the y-intercept. Okay. So what I'd like you to do for this graph here is determine the slope and y-intercept. Determine the slope and y-intercept. Slope and the y-intercept. Okay, can anyone tell me what the y-intercept is here? 1, right? Crosses the y-axis at 1. So another nice point, you can need any two nice points that actually intersect um, with the axis, the grids properly. So to get from this point, our y-intercept to this new point, what do we have to move? 2 down, so negative 2 and 3 across, rewrite. And so your slope should be negative 2 thirds. Okay. So the next question says, write the equation of the line in slope-intercept form. So that's our y equals mx plus b. Yeah. Okay, so we're just plugging it into y equals mx plus b. What's our m value? What was our slope? Negative 2 over 3. Don't forget to write your x. It's a common mistake is forgetting the x. And then plus... One, and there's our equation. See, a lot of it's review. And then we'll get into one concept that's new. The next question is kind of like last unit. When you had a problem and you had to uh, explain what different things mean, and so that's going to come up again on your unit exam. So student council rep represents, uh, or sorry, rents a portable dunk tank as a fundraising activity. Students pay for the chance to hit a target with a ball and dunk a teacher in the tank of water. 
the relationship between the number of balls thrown, x, so this is really important. What does each variable stand for? So the number of balls thrown is x, and the profit is y. You always need to figure out, okay, who's who? Who's x and who's y? What are my variables starting, standing for? So profit, y, balls thrown is x. And it may be represented by the equation 3x minus 2y minus 600 equals 0. So let's rewrite the equation in slope-intercept form. What does that mean? What's slope-intercept form? y equals mx plus b. So basically it's saying isolate y. Right, because we want y equals mx plus b. You know how to do that, right? From yesterday. There's multiple ways to isolate y. We could either move the x and 600, or you can move the y. What would you like to do? Move the y. We have a minus 2y, so we are going to plus 2y. 2y's are gone. 3x minus 600 equals 2y. And our last step, divide by 2. So our equation becomes y equals 3 over 2x minus 300. Okay, what's the slope of this line? 3 over 2, and it says state what it represents in the context of this question. So we need to figure out, okay, Remember, slope is change of y over change of x. What does the y stand for in this problem? The profit. So this is the dollars, the profit, or the dollars. And x is the number of balls. So what does the slope represent in the context of this question? It's $3 for two balls. So three dollars for two balls. So that's where you knowing what your variables stand for is so important. So you can apply it to your slope y intercept and you can interpret what it means. And when I say what does it represent in the context of this question, some of you of your unit exam literally wrote the definition of slope instead of saying the context. It, it we're dealing with, right? So in these problems, when I say what it represents, I'm really asking in this context, okay? Maybe I'll be more specific next time. Uh, identify the y-intercept. What's the y-intercept here? Mm -hmm. So negative 300. Now the y-intercept, remember y has to do with profit. So why is our profit negative 300 initially? That's the cost. And what supplies did we have to do? Look at the beginning of the question. We had to rent to the cost to rent the dunk tank. So right off the bat, they're down $300. Their profit in the beginning, so profit with no sales is negative $300 negative three hundred dollars so they're basically in the hole their profit is negative so they're in the hole three hundred dollars to start so the break-even point is the point at which the money raised equals the money spent so really what does that mean if you're if you break even what's your profit zero so break even means zero dollars profit And it says, how many balls must the student sell to reach the break-even point? So remember our equation was y equals 3 over 2x minus 300. <laughs> so how can we figure out the balls, the number of balls needed to make zero profit or break-even? So we know one of these variables. So we know x or y. Remember, y stands for what? Profit. Y is the profit and 
X is the number of balls. So who are we looking for? X. We're looking for the number of balls. We're looking for X. Do we know why? Do we know our profit when we break even? Yeah? What is it? Zero. So our profit is zero when we break even. And we want to find the number of balls needed to break even. Okay, so let's solve for X. How do we do this? We can either move X or you can move the 300. I'm going to move the 300 just because I like th keeping things positive. Glass half full. <laughs> okay, so negative 300 to move it. Plus 300. And we're left with 300 equals 3 over 2x. So how do you want to solve that now? Okay, divide both sides by 3 over 2. Or we can multiply both sides by 2. So to get rid of the fraction. So times both sides by 2. In fact, you could even multiply by 2 thirds, the reciprocal. Because remember, a number times its reciprocal is 1. But let's start by just getting rid of the fraction. It's nice and simple to break it up into that one. So then 2 times 300, 600 equals 3x. And now we divide by 3. And we get the lovely number of 200 balls is needed to be sold. We must sell 200 balls to break even. So I could also ask you, how many sales would that be? How many sales would that be? So you need 200 balls to break even. How many different transactions would that be? Remember, our what's our rate of change? $3 for every two balls. So every time someone goes up, they, they spend $3 for every two balls. So it's 100 transactions if we need 200 balls. So it's two balls for every person, unless they buy multiple ones. Okay, so turning on to the next page. Hey, Shayla, how many points at the very least are required to draw a line? The very least, how many points? Two. Two points. The very least, if we have two points, we connect them and we got a line. Uh oh. Delete, delete, don't look. Okay. <laughs> Jillian, what are the two easiest points to probably use when you need to find two points? The zeros. So what I mean by the zeros are the x and y intercepts. When x is zero, oh, oh, I can spell intercepts. The x and y intercepts are the zeros of the graph. So we want to complete this beautiful table here. Look how simple it looks. I like simple tables. We have when x is zero and y is zero. So how would I find what y is when x is 0? Sub it in. We have an equation, right? So sub in x is 0, and let's find y. So 2 times 0, it's super easy, right? Because 2 times 0, 0. This doesn't even exist. So all we have to do to both sides is if we have negative 3y equals 6, divide by negative 3, which gives us negative 2. So as a point, this would be x is 0, y is negative 2. How would you do the next one? If I, I want to know what x is when y is 0. Fill in y as? Zero. So 2x minus 3 times 0 has to equal 6. What is negative 3 times 0? So, 0. So really we're left with 2x equals 6. Divide by 2. x is 3. So 3 comma 0. So is that enough to draw, put, plot those points and draw a line? Yep. 0, negative 2. 
and 3 and 0. All you have to do now, grab your rulers and connect your lines. I'm going to roughly sketch it. Whoa. One, two, eight. Okay, why do you think these points are called the intercepts? They cross the x and y axis. That's where they cross the x and they intercept the x and y axis. Okay, so some generalizations we can make. The x intercept is the place where the graph crosses the x-axis. So this point right here, the x-axis. So really importantly, when we want to find the inter x-intercept, who equals 0 at that point? Who's 0 at the x-intercept? Y. This is the point x, comma, 0. So that's where y is equal to 0. That is basically the basis of today's lesson highlighter. We find the x-intercepts, we make y equals to zero. That's like study sheet material. The y-intercept is the point what point of the graph is that? The y-axis. So that's our y-intercept and that point is zero comma y. So to find the y-intercept, we're going to set x equal to 0. Let's use a pretty color. So really important there. Circle it, star it, I don't know. Whatever you have to do. My graphs didn't show up, but that's okay. Okay, so for each one, we want to find... Uh, so we're first going to actually solve for the x and y intercepts, graph it, and then using our graph, figure out our slope. Okay? So how? let's start with the x-intercept. How do I get the uh, x-intercept? We just set who to 0? No, y. We want to figure out what x is when y is 0. So our equation becomes 2x plus... 2 times 0, minus 8 equals 0. And then what happens? Poof! 2 times 0 is gone. Love it. Then it becomes this beautifully easy equation. Next step, add 8. 2x equals 8. Divide by 2. x is 4. Super easy. Where's my easy button? I have one. I need to pull it out. Okay, so there's the first one. You can plot that on your graph if you like. So my graph's going to be right here. One, two, three, four. So here's my graph. One, two, three, four. Okay. How do we get the y-intercept. Set, set x equal to 0. So what does our equation become? 2 times 0 plus 2y e minus 8 equals 0. And then, poof, that's gone. Disappears magic show. Are you all enthralled? <laughs> yeah. Maybe if I had cable running. Next step. Plus 8. 280, 2y equals 8. Oh, this one's so easy. Divide by 2. y equals 4. What would this be as a point? 0, 4, 
So on our graph, one, two, three, four. Is that enough to connect them? Yep. And last, we have to find our slope using our y-intercept. So what would be my slope? We had to go down, down 4, right 4, which is minus 1. Do you think you could try the next one on your own? Or, yeah? Or should we do, two? yeah? Okay. Give it a shot. Okay, for the x-intercept, we set y to 0, 2 times 0, gone, so 4x equals 16, you divide by 4, and you should have had x equal to 4. So that's the, because we have x equal to, that's our x-intercept. The y-intercept, we set x to 0. We're solving for y. So if I'm solving for y, that's going to be my y-intercept. 2y equals 16, divide by 2. y is 8. So 0 and 8. So now that we know y, y is, oops, y-intercept is 8. Draw our line. <laughs> okay, draw your line through the points. Whatever. Okay, what's my slope then? How do I get my slope? Negative 8 over 4, because we go down 8, right 4. Shayla? And what's negative 8 divided by 4? Negative 2. Okay? All right. So turn to the next page. Uh, if, I asked it, if I ask you to show the work, you have to show the work. Okay? All right, horizontal lines. What are the slopes of horizontal lines? Vance, a horizontal line, what's the slope of a horizontal line? Zero. Miriam, vertical line, what's the slope of a vertical line? Not zero, opposite of zero. Un undefined, undefined. Remember, because it's a number over zero, and we can't divide by zero, undefined. So this, this part here is a little bit of a review. A little note is whenever an equation, if an equation has only one variable, the equation has only one variable, then it's only going to be, it's, then it's going to be a vertical or a horizontal line. Horizontal or vertical line? So if the equation only has one variable, it would be horizontal or vertical. So you guys have to remember, if, it's, if the y is the only variable, it's going to be a horizontal line. So here, an equation... An equation in the form y equals k, and when I say k, it's k is an integer, so a number, has a slope of 0, and thus results in a horizontal line. Okay, so y equals equation is a horizontal line. So when we, solve, when we have an equation with only one variable, we always solve for that variable. So isolate that variable. So we're going to isolate y. First step, plus 4. So move the constant over to isolate y. And then the 2y equals 4, divide by 2y equals 2. So it's going to be a horizontal line through y equals 2. y axis is this guy, so y equals 2 is right there. Therefore, it's a horizontal line through y equals 2. So same idea for x, except for what kind of line will it be? Vertical. So if the x is the only variable, we isolate for x. The slope is undefined, and therefore, we're going to have a vertical line. 
So our goal is, again, isolate the variable. So what are we going to do here? So isolate x. You could move the minus 4x over, sure. Or you, it doesn't matter who you move. Either would have been fine. So 20 equals negative 4x, and then divide by negative 4. And we have negative 5 equals x. So the x-axis is right here. Right? So where is x equals to negative 5? My graph looks a little bit different. Right over here is x equals to negative 5, and so it's going to be a vertical line through x equals negative 5. Mine is, you guys have go all the way to negative 6. Okay, we're actually going to uh, skip the last problem today. I'd like to look at it another day, but I, I do want to give you some more time for homework. I need to walk you through your homework, however. Um, mm, yeah. Mm, should we? Okay. Okay, <laughs> so your homework, of course, you started already 362. You also have a worksheet to complete, and that's just one page did you hear about. So if everyone can get their uh, brown booklet out, and you also need to have whatever you do your work on, so your workbook or whatever you, line paper. I don't, I don't have the brown paper. It's in the back, oh, like the brown book. So graph paper, whatever you do your work on, your homework on. Okay, so... Uh, the worksheet's called, Did You Hear About? Okay, so I'm going to just walk you through what I need to see. Now, some of this seems really easy, and so you might want to skip some steps, but I really want you to get in the habit of doing, going through all the steps, even if it's easy, and showing all the work. Okay, so I'm going to work through the very first part with you, and then the rest of the worksheet is also part of your homework. So I'll grab, uh, so let's look at the very first one, 3x plus 2y equals 6. So for each question, you have to find its x and y intercept. So 3x plus 2y equals 6. I'll do it on this here. So a is 3x plus 2y equals 6. So for each one, you have to solve for the x and y intercept. So let's start, stop with the, start with the x intercept. What are we going to do? Who's 0? y, the other one. 3x plus 2 times 0 equals 6. What happens with 2 times 0? Oop, it disappears. And then we have 3x equals 6. Divide by 3. And x equals 2. And then we want to write that as a coordinate. So what would that be as a coordinate? 2 is x. Remember x, y. So 2 is x and y was... Zero. Okay? And now the y intercept. Who's zero in the y intercept? The other guy. So in this case, x, three times zero plus two y equals six. Oop, three times zero is gone. We have two y equals six, and then divide each side by two. Y is three, and so as a point. X was 0, Y was 3, okay? So for each one, you need to show that work, and then you go to the sheet and you look, okay, who had the X-intercept of 2, 0, and the Y-intercept of 0, 3? So here, you can see 2, 0, 0, 3 is the. So in A, we put the, okay? So I need to see your work for this. More than I need this answer, I need your work. Um... Okay, just so you know, I know it seems like this end is kind of cut off. This should be because, so, S-O. I don't know if your letters are showing up okay. Then rooster, this is it. Robinson, cracked, cracked egg. Crew, W here, and up. Okay, so your homework is the textbook, pages 362, and then this worksheet.